So what I find very appealing about van life is it's a mobile lifestyle. You are always on the go. You always got to be watching your back. You always, your head is always, you're always thinking, where am I going to sleep tonight? What am I going to have for dinner? Um, the same thing you think about in sticks and bricks, but it's just a different way to operate. Where am I going to take my shower at? Where am I going to go get my coffee? You always thinking the wheels are turning. And to me being a digital nomad, one of the things that I know is that I can work in a van when the temperature is fine, like it's not too hot or not too cold. But when the temperature is too cold or too hot, I have to go indoors. That's why I got I got Panera Bread coffee over there. I got a subscription so I can go in the coffee house. Well, anyway, let's talk about the motel. The first week in the motel, my body folded into that bed. Um, it was heaven. It really was. My body needed that rest. I wasn't listening to my body. I was just going, going, going. And my body, it basically shut down. I told y'all like, oh, it's so cold. It's so cold. And yes, it was cold. But also me trying to work, going in and out of coffee shops, libraries. My body said, no, no, no. And I had to listen to my body. And I listened to my body. The second week in the motel, I saw a roach. And that's probably why they call it, called motels, roach motel. That's probably why I got that name. Um, I hadn't seen a roach in, what, 40 years? years 40 <laughs> I ain't seen a roach in a minute so um, I went to the office I flew to the office and I was like yeah I got roaches and so they was like they were going to give me some roach things somebody brought me the maintenance person brought me some spray he sprayed in there I already had my fly and insect spray that I take camping with me and I was trying to use that I showed him that he's like this is not gonna work this is not gonna work you need this and I was like okay so I only saw one that was that one day then the next day, I got up to go to the bathroom and I cut on the light and sure enough, on the sink was a baby roach. And I was like, oh, my God, I can't do it. Now, this hotel, they do clean this. They, they shampoo the carpets. I've walked around the property and I've seen them because I'll see the housekeeper and I may need something like some more toilet paper, whatever. And I've walked around the property and they are in there shampooing these carpets. They say when a person pays a weekly fee, like I've been paying weekly and this is my third week, they, when that person leaves, they shampoo the carpet. Um, it's just like an apartment. You know how you leave out an apartment, they shampoo, they do a thorough clean and I've watched them do it and kudos to the staff. They're very nice. They work incredibly hard. It's been raining. It's been cold. And I just have to say thank you to the staff. And you can tip, tip your staff. I just want to, y'all probably know that. But anyway, um, so the motel, anyway, I'm OCD. So I cleaned the hotel every, before I even saw the bug or the bugs too, I had cleaned that hotel. I brought my Lysol wipes, my um, bleach. I got um, some uh, Echo Green wipes. I got every kind of wipes imaginable. I got this um, natural spray. Um, I don't know what kind of spray it is, but it's a cleaner. And I do all that anyway. Even if I go to a hotel that's supposed to be nice or a bed and breakfast that's supposed to be nice, I still do the cleaning. They say the remote control is the nastiest thing in a hotel. I can only imagine. That hotel, y'all, even though I have my candles, my diffuser, my incense, my um, smudge sticks, that candle smell, that hotel smells like a thousand years of love making. It smells like Badussi. My cousin calls it Badussi. Whatever. <laughs> She's so stupid. So it smells like Badussi. And I cannot take that smell of Badussi. I can't take that smell. So like I said, the first week, um, I noticed it was kind of like a stale smell, but my body needed the rest so bad, it just let it go. The second week, I was like, oh no. Then to be in that hotel on Thanksgiving and not smell Thanksgiving food, it was a tough day on Thanksgiving, y'all. I text both my sons on Thanksgiving. Uh, one of my sons was calling me. I was in the shower. Um, so we played phone tag. And then uh, my niece, I texted my niece and uh, my mom. I called my mom and my mom, she couldn't even eat. She wasn't even feeling well. So that just had me in a bomb mood. Sometimes what I do, y'all, I downplay like my lack of comfort I can be more comfortable sometimes I throw pity parties I'll just be for real because I could have drove to any my cousin's house in Ohio I mean I'm in Ohio but I could have went to where they're at and I could have enjoyed um, a Thanksgiving meal with my family it was so strange not being with my sons because every year both my sons are in their 30s and every year and I mean every year I have never not spent a Thanksgiving with my sons even when they were away um, I would go visit them so it's just it was like the weirdest thing and I can tell from the text from my sons 
they were like just they know that's not me that's they they know that's not me because um even though I've been doing van life for three years, like me and my youngest son, I'd be like, let's go to the casino. It's been a couple of times where me and him went to the casino on Christmas. Um, and my oldest son, too. So it's just like sometimes we'll go to the buffet on Christmas or something. Sometimes we do family stuff. It just depends or whatever. Um, but for me not to be with them on holiday, it was very, very strange. Also, my one cousin, um, she cooked, and y'all know, me and her hang like that's my I, I mean I got a lot of cousins who I'm you know but this cousin and the kids and I miss them and stuff it was just so weird but um I just decided to take Thanksgiving as a day for me to reflect being in this hotel um you all this mental clutter it just starts it comes out um this is something that doesn't happen in a van in a van like I said you're always on the go in van life you always need to know what your next move is that's good and that's bad. It's good because when you're in a place like a hotel, you get comfortable. I found myself after working all day, just sitting there, I had a TV on. I hadn't owned this TV in Sticks and Bricks, even when I was in Sticks and Bricks for over 10 years. Only time I would watch TV if I go to somebody's house or like if I'm in a hotel or a bed and breakfast, but I just been letting the TV run 24 hours, not having the sound up, but just down. And I have it on like, I don't know, I like crime shows like Dateline and Forensic Files and all this crime and stuff in this news. And it just, it was not, it's been dark and just damp and um, just memories and things just coming up. And it's like, you know what? That's what the problem is. This is why I'm in van life. And this sums it up right there why i'm in van life because in your home you get very comfortable if you always do what you always done you're always going to get what you've always got and yes comfortable feels comfortable right very comfortable but sometimes when you are like for me out in nature breathing fresh air meeting new people seeing new sights and sounds that does something for my spirit being in the same place too long um, it just doesn't work for me. It doesn't. I have planned on, I'm looking at the time, I have planned on getting a bed and breakfast as I shared. But when I was at this hotel, like I said, I cleaned it. They clean it. It's okay. It's the awful smell, the the old look. It looked like, uh, what's that TV show, Don? Um, and they used to be in Florida, them two guys. The two guys is a black and white guy. I can't think of the name of the show. But it looked like back in the day, this hotel probably would have been all of that. But um, it's very worn down. But they do, like I said, clean it very well. Um, but I needed this to be indoors. But you know, I don't. I wouldn't ever want to be this life. I just would not want to be. I don't want to be still right now. So what my plans are? This is going on long. Let me start up another one. Just one. So my plans are. I'm far from where my storage is, but I'm going to drive down maybe once or twice um, this week or maybe next week and I'm going to try to get that storage in some kind of organization. I'm going to call both my sons over um, and just try to do something to that storage to declutter. I am in a declutter challenge. I invite you all to join a declutter challenge. Please check my community tab. Um, you'll see the prizes you can win from me if you join. Um, okay, so back to the storage. So I want to get that storage down some. I had wanted to get in a one room storage, but they didn't have none available. But at any time, one can come up because I have two rooms. I don't need two rooms. One room will be fine. It probably would knock off about $50 or whatever. The thing about people saying, oh, you're in a hotel or you're here, you're there. I hear it from, I hear it through the chatter mill from family or whatever. Like she could be here, she could be there. Well, the house that they have the big Thanksgiving at, that's the house where I was brutally attacked. So I will never step in that house again. Um, I don't see myself ever stepping in the house again. I have connected with my family. We grew up together. We slept in the same bed, slept in the same floor, our grandma's house. What? We drunk out of the same milk cart. We used to put the milk cart up to your mouth. So you cannot, they are my DNA. They are my DNA. They're my heartbeats. You know what I'm saying? My sons are my heartbeats. My cousins are my heartbeats. Like, my heart would not beat without them because we did everything. We do everything together. But there is a healing process that needs to take place there. So I didn't want to go there. My mom's sick. My mom couldn't go see my mom. My mom's sick. Uh, my mom. Yeah. So he turned this off. 
my mom is living by dying, you know? And, um, you know, um, so, but I am getting on the road and I'm going to be like emailing some people. Everybody got their own schedule. I figure like this, y'all, uh, with the caravan, um, I'll email some people, I'll text some people and whoever starts, we roll out, we roll out. Um, I'm just, I'm going to get on the road come Thursday. Um, I hope to have all my things in order, like as far as giving my youngest son the key to my storage and to my mailbox. Um, I got to take care of some business here and I hope to get on the road. This car, I'm going to trust what the mechanic said. I'm going to trust it. Um, if I get, and also I have a person who, she has an inside track to Honda, so she's going to try to help me too. But I'm going to get on the road. If something happens, I had the money. What difference does it make if I get it fixed here, there, whatever? You know what I'm saying? If I get broke down, you know. So anyway, y'all, I'm just going to go on the own rambling. That's why I don't do like these talkie videos because just like all of y'all that do YouTube, I'll be all over the place. But anyway, whatever you do and however you do it, Always, always, always take the joy route. Take the